Good afternoon and welcome to the Derufus Deminar series. My name is Chris Rizal and I'm the Managing Director. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Jasper Wong, who is one of our product managers. Good afternoon, everyone. So we've had a webinar series running called Innovator Base Camp, where our customers present interesting and innovative projects. And you can find this on YouTube. Uh, but we get asked all the time, can you demonstrate a particular workflow or do a detailed walkthrough of a particular feature? So that's exactly what we're going to do in this seminar series. Take a specific topic and take a deep dive into the details. In terms of the format of these seminar sessions, your feedback was to keep it to around the 15 minute mark. So with that in mind, let's get straight into today's topic of Dorofus BIM linking. Jasper, what are the main learning objectives for today? Uh, in today's session, we will be touching on what is BIM linking, what is synchronization and who is involved in the process, and how to set up what we call attribute configurations. We will also share some best practices uh, at the end. BIM linking is a workflow process of connecting various elements of a database and digital models of building, thus enabling information exchange between database and digital models. The elements that can be linked between models and database can include rooms and their primary properties, for example, room numbers or program area, rooms and their room data information, such as the design, requirements or engineering requirements. Items and their occurrence list within rooms. For example, tables, GPOs or ceiling grills. NEP systems that is not constrained within a room and often traverse multiple rooms or the entire level. For example, the AC ducting or uh, electrical circuiting. And finally, Information at a project level, for example, levels or departments that can contain a few of those rooms. On any project, there are many stakeholders creating and developing information. Those that work in both database and geometric models will synchronize information in Drophus and their models to ensure the information is accurate. Data syncing between models and database will take place numerous times as the stakeholder may depend on other stakeholders' information. Drophus plugin can link with Archicad and Revit environments. Both the desktop client and the Drophus web can host IFC files. One Drophus database can connect with multiple Archicad, Revit, and IFC format models. Here are some benefits of BIM linking with a Drophus database. It is automated, improves accuracy, and not prone to human error. All the changes to the database are logged and tracked. By being a single source of truth for your project, data is accessible to all parties working on the project and can be reused for downstream tasks. If you accidentally delete a piece of content from the model, the database information is not deleted and can come to a rescue to reintroduce it to the model. Lastly, consolidate information from multiple sources and stakeholders into a structured database. We have plugins for Archicad, Revit, and IFC format models. It is important to note that the Drophus attribute configurations plays a vital role, acting as a bridge between the Drophus and the digital models. Here are the relationships between Drophus elements and the Archicad model categories. Between Drophus elements and model categories from IFC format files. and the relationships between Drophus elements and model categories in Revit. In this demo, we will be showing the beam linking in Revit for rooms, item types, and item occurrences to corresponding Revit rooms, family types, and instances. The concept is the same for Archicad and IFC model files. 
The first thing to do is to create a new attribute configuration for the room. We will call this demo R2. We will use the room ID in Durofus and wrap it as key attribute. Room ID is an auto-generated number guaranteed to be unique, so you don't have to try to man manually uh, do this. These two values act like a handshake, and if they match between the two softwares, Drofus plugin will proceed to perform the data mapping, which we will now set up. We will map room name and program area attributes to write to the Revit model. We will also set up room area and write to Durofus design area attribute and push the value into Durofus. Setting this configuration as a default means that this is the setting that will be used for synchronizing data. You can check which configuration you are using through the attribute configuration. We will now see how we can link up a room in Revit to Durofus. When inserting a new room, the Durofus plugin will prompt to link to an available room in the database using the demo 2 attribute synchronizations uh, we set up previously. Once linked, you will notice the information is available in the Durofus panel. You can also link existing rooms to Durofus or create new Durofus rooms from Revit. We will now demonstrate how the attribute configuration and the values that's been processed by the demo 2 configuration. Do keep an eye on the, att the room attribute configuration on the right. Using balcony X, the first value we will look at is the key attribute, which is the Drawfus room ID. Next, we will look at the program area and the room name that is synced from Drawfus to Revit. And the last synchronized value is the room area from Revit to Drawfus design area attribute. We will also see that the value has been, has been updated in the desktop client. Next, we will look at setting up a new attribute configuration for items. The process is very similar to setting up the room config. Once again, we will need to identify the key attributes for this setup. We will use the item ID, which is auto-generated and guaranteed to be unique. We will set up the Drawfus item name and beam ID to write to Revit parameters, description, and type mark respectively. From the model, the Revit family and type name plus the Omni class 23 classification value in the Revit family will be set to synchronize to corresponding Drawfus attributes. On level six of this building is a gymnasium where there are some treadmills that we need to link to Drawfus. We will be demonstrating linking of the treadmill Revit type to Drawfus item. We do this within the add-in and by searching for them in the list of unlinked Revit families and unlinked Drawfus items. We use the bi-directional arrow to link the two elements. When linked, the items will appear in the linked item panel below. The linking is carried out using the demo now to config settings, which there will be data transferred during the linking process. Using the sync configurations, 
we will now look at some of the values that has been synchronized between Dorofus and the Revit model. The first value is the beam ID, which is pushed from Dorofus to the type mark field. In the other direction, the Omni class value in the Revit type properties is pushed into the corresponding Dorofus attribute. We will now set up the config at the family instance occurrence level. We recommend to use the occurrence ID in Dorofus as the key attribute value. As the occurrence ID is generated within Dorofus and is unique for every occurrence. We strongly recommend to use the setup in this demonstration as a starting point. It is possible to sync instance and occurrence information, but you will need to consider whether the parameters are of instance based or type based, and also ensure parameter values can be unique within groups. We have established links between Dorofus and Revit. We will now demonstrate one application of this. Originally, Eight treadmills were planned for this space. Through the design process, we could fit 10 treadmills in the space. So we are now going to update uh, the quantity in the office. This opens up a discussion on workflows, which we will cover in the next demo now. Using the items in room button in the Drophus toolbar, this function will identify the quantities from the database and models. We can see there are two more treadmills in Revit model than in the Drophus database. Quickly switching back into Drophus desktop client, uh, we'll confirm that indeed there are eight in the database. Back in the Drophus plugin within Revit, we will use the update Drophus button to update the quantities of treadmills in the database. Once again, back in the Drophus desktop client, the quantities of treadmill is updated to 10. Now the quantities of treadmills in both the database and the models is the same. We have a list of tips and tricks or traps to look for. We will share this in the follow up email. Some of the common traps that we see that can help you on your projects are. Set up different configurations for different tasks or stakeholders or project stages. Within the project team, communicate what are the key attributes values that you're using. We are using the Drophus generated IDs as key attribute values in this demo. If you are using other attributes as key, ensure they are not duplicated. Ensure the parameters you are writing to can accept the value. Pushing alphabets to numeric fields will produce an error. So as a recap of today's session, we have shown how to set up attribute configurations for rooms, items, and occurrences, how to link Drophus rooms and items with model elements, and we have also shown how you can validate quantities between models and database. Our wiki page have more information and details about how the plugins sorry about the plugins and how else they can interact with the database. These QR codes will take you to the pages in our user guide for each of the model file formats. I will leave this slide for a few more moments while you access and bookmark the page. We have come to the end of this demonstration. I hope you have gotten something out of this session. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Jasper. That was really great. Well done. Um, so in our latest release of the software 2.7, you can set these configurations as defaults for each of the models in your project. Conscious that you will have maybe different settings for architecture and engineering models, and potentially even different categories of items within those models as well. Um, 
Jasper, just in case anybody wasn't able to join today's live session or they want to share this with their colleagues, how can they find this content? We will, uh, we are recording this session and we will be uploading it to our YouTube uh, channel. We will also collate all the Demona series videos into a playlist for easy access. Um, once the video has been uploaded, uh, we will be sending out a follow up email just to notify um, the attendees. Perfect. Um, so our next session will be in the middle of April, where we will look at design validation, where you have planned requirements in Dorofus, otherwise known as building programming, and you want to compare these up against what has been modelled. Invitations will be going out shortly, uh, and if you have any feedback on the Deminar series, please reach out to Jasper directly. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.